Hello, I'm going to discuss and demonstrate some aspects of rotational inertia. Rotational inertia is a measure of the resistance to the change in rotational motion of an object. It depends on the mass of the object and it depends on the distribution of mass within that object. Now, for example, I have uh, two objects here. One's a hollow cylinder, we'll call it a hoop. One's a solid cylinder. Uh, the radius of this cylinder is equal to the radius of this one, so they have the same radius, and it turns out that the mass of each is the same. I'm going to take these two cylinders and let them start from rest and roll down this inclined plane, and uh, we have the, the solid one and uh, the hollow one, and we're going to watch them roll down the inclined plane and see how they roll. Again, the radius is the same on each, and the mass of each is the same. And we see that the uh, solid cylinder beats out in this race, wins the race, and it turns out the reason for that is because the mass is distributed all up to the outside of the, of the uh, cylinder. This is a hollow cylinder with all the mass distributed at the outside. Here the mass is distributed uniformly throughout. And it turns out that uh, there's a quantity called radius of gyration such that for a hoop, the ratio of the radius of gyration squared to the radius squared of a hoop is equal to one. That same ratio for a solid cylinder is equal to one half. And it turns out that the uh, one with the smallest ratio, k squared to r squared, the one with the smallest number here, is the one with the greatest acceleration going down the plane. So we see that uh, with the cylinder, that ratio is one half, and with the hoop, the ratio is one, so the cylinder will go down with the greatest acceleration and beat the hoop down in the race as we saw. Now, let's next compare cylinders with one another. Let's take two cylinders here that have the same, uh, they have the same radius, uh, but one is uh, more massive than the other. In fact, if I uh, put this on the balance scale, we see that the copper is more massive than the, uh, the aluminum, and uh, if we actually did the measurement, we'd find that this has about three times the mass, the copper has about three times the mass of the aluminum. Let's compare how they roll down the hill and see how those two compare. And we see that with an experimental error, they roll down together. So therefore, they have the same ratio here, radius of gyration squared to radius squared in their cylinders. That ratio is one half. It's independent of the mass of the cylinders. Now further, we can illustrate that that ratio is independent of the, uh, of the size of the cylinder. The radii, here's two cylinders. They're both made out of aluminum. They have the same density. But uh, I want to show that they have the same ratio there. When it comes to this number, they both have this ratio of one half. And so we do that experiment with those two, and let's see how they compare. And uh, they also roll down together. In fact, we would find that all solid cylinders would have the same acceleration down the hill because they have the same ratio, radius of gyration squared to radius squared. Now, if we take spheres, here's two spheres. For spheres, that ratio turns out to be two-fifths. Notice that's very close to one-half, but not exactly one-half. That's uh, two-fifths compared to one-half. So here we have two spheres, and they have different masses, and they have different sizes. In fact, they have different densities. And uh, we're going to watch them roll down the hill. And if my prediction is correct, they will roll together because that ratio will be two-fifths in the case of each sphere. And I'm happy that they rolled down a hill together, showing that uh, the ratio is the same. Even though the radius is different, the ratio is the same, two-fifths in the case of all spheres. Now, if we were to compare a sphere with a cylinder, what would we expect? We could take any one of these cylinders, since they're all the same. A cylinder is one-half, and a sphere is two-fifths. Well, one-half is just a little bit greater than two-fifths, so we might expect the sphere would edge out the cylinder just a little bit, in the race down the hill, with the sphere having just a little bit smaller ratio than the cylinder. Let's just try that experiment and uh, see how that works. 
They might be so close to the same that we won't be able to tell the difference, but let's try the experiment and see. Well, it turns out that the sphere uh, outraces the uh, cylinder by just a little bit because it has, a, it has just a slightly smaller ratio. Now, let's compare the, the sphere with the hoop here one more time. We'll compare the hoop with, a, with another object. We compared it with this uh, solid cylinder before. Now let's compare the hoop with a solid sphere. And, of course, we expect the sphere to win this race. And we see that the sphere uh, beats out the hoop in the race down the hill because the sphere has a uh, ratio of two-fifths where the hoop, the ratio, is equal to one. Rotational inertia.